all of these other efforts at mediation are just going to be a giant fail. The United States is taking the most bizarre tack with regard to negotiation. So as I say, I am not ripping on the Biden administration for the amount of military material they are pouring into Ukraine. In fact, I think that's a good strategy. The attempts to strategize with our European allies to get humanitarian and military aid into Ukraine, that's good from the Biden administration. By the way, even the attempt to downplay and de-escalate some of the rhetoric is not a bad move by the Biden administration. Where they are completely failing is when it comes to their attempts at international diplomacy. And the reason I say this is because they are still operating under the assumption that you can turn states that look very much like Vladimir Putin's states into friends rather than enemies by offering them some sort of concessions. And this is bizarre to me. At the same time that you're, you're learning the lesson that authoritarian dictators do not care about their commitment and will do whatever they can to maximize their own power, you are attempting to make overtures to authoritarian dictators who are not going to give you anything. This is the, this is the move that the, the Biden administration is simultaneously making. It's bizarre. And, and when I say that it's bizarre, I mean, like, the United States is now trying to go to Venezuela to act as a go-between. Nicolas Maduro is a socialist dictator who has his people eating dogs in the streets of Caracas. And you've got the Blinken Biden administration sending negotiators down to Venezuela to use them as some sort of go-between in an attempt to pry Venezuela loose from Russia. Yeah, good luck with that one. According to the Washington Post, a group of senior U.S. officials flew to Venezuela on Saturday for a meeting with Maduro's government to discuss the possibility of easing sanctions on Venezuelan oil exports as the Biden administration weighs a ban on imports of Russian oil and gas, according to two people familiar with the situation. So, by the way, how kind of morally disreputable is this? We're, what Biden is now saying to Venezuela is, OK, the Russians, they're really bad. You know, they invaded a sovereign country. We need to cut off their oil supply. So we will come to you, a socialist dictatorship where millions of people are living in abject poverty because of your dictatorship. And we will ask you for the oil. Makes perfect sense. We will go to a, a foreign nation that hates our guts, that sees the United States as a great Satan. And we'll ask them for the oil as opposed to the Russians in order so that we can cut off the Russians. I'm, I'm sure that that's going to work. That, that'll probably be great. According to the Washington Post, the trip is the highest level U.S. visit to the socialist state in years and comes as the United States is seeking to isolate Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. But here's the thing. We're not even isolating Russia because in the same time that we are, quote unquote, isolating Russia, we are now attempting to make overtures to Russia directly in order so that we can make concessions to Iran. So the lesson that the Biden administration is taking away from this is not we need a stronger world stance against authoritarian states that hate our allies, particularly our independent allies. Instead, the move by the Biden administration is what if we just go to more of our enemies and we make concessions to, to them? What, what if we do that? And what if we even talk with the Russians about making concessions to them? According to the Wall Street Journal, fresh demands from Russia threatened to derail talks to restore the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. Moscow said it wanted written guarantees that Ukraine-related sanctions won't prevent it from trading broadly with Tehran under a revived pact. So now, the, because Biden wants some sort of garbage bullcrap deal with the Iranians, the Russians are holding him up. It's incredible. The demands made by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Saturday, dismissed by U.S. officials on Sunday, came as Western and Iranian officials said they were near to reaching a deal to restore the nuclear pact, which lifted most international sanctions on Iran in exchange for tight but temporary, temporary restrictions on Tehran's nuclear programs. Western officials said they wanted a deal on the nuclear file in place this week. And it's unbelievable. We're using the Russians as the go-between in the Middle East. While we are sanctioning them on the global stage and shipping weapons into Ukraine to fight them. Meanwhile, by the way, the lead Russian negotiator, his name is Mikhail Ulyanov, he's openly bragging about the fact that Iran is besting the United States in this negotiation, thanks to the help of the Russians. The diplomatic incompetence of this administration is truly astonishing. You know, when people say, oh, look how they're mobilizing our European allies. Wrong. The European allies mobilized themselves and the United States, as always, jumped on the backseat of the car once it was already in motion. When it comes to Iran, the Russians are just leading us around by the nose. This is crazy. Here's Ulyanov explaining how stupid the West is. I'm absolutely sincere in this regard. Iran got much more than it could expect. Much more. We could rely on, on each other on many, many points. And on many, many points, through joint efforts, we succeeded. Iran got much more than it could expect, according to the Russians. So at the same time that Joe Biden and his team are like, we have to take a strong stance against Russia. They're going to Venezuela as both a moderate influence and in order to get their oil, emboldening Venezuela. They're emboldening Iran with the help of the Russians. 
is incompetence on the highest scale. So, so what has this turned into now? It's turned into Thomas Friedman of the New York Times begging China to help out because nothing demonstrates strength quite like begging China. Thomas Friedman, whose theories about foreign policy have been wrong on nearly along every step of the way. And I mentioned last week the Thomas Friedman McDonald's theory of politics suggesting that countries with McDonald's don't fight each other. That, of course, is not true. Well, now, according to the New York Times, with every passing day, the war in Ukraine becomes a bigger threat, becomes a bigger tragedy for the Ukrainian people, but also a bigger threat to the future of Europe and the world at large. There's only one country that might have the power to stop it. It's not the United States. It's China. I'm sure China's going to step in. I'm sure China's going to do something. He says, if China announced that rather than staying neutral, it was joining the economic boycott of Russia, it might shake Putin enough to stop this vicious war. At a minimum, it would give him pause because now he has no other significant ally aside from India in the world. Why would Xi Jinping take such a stand, which would seemingly undermine his dream of seizing Taiwan? The short answer is the past eight decades of relative peace among the great powers led to a rapidly globalizing world that has been key to China's rapid economic rise and the elevation out of poverty for some 800 million Chinese people since 1980. Peace has been very good for China, says Thomas Friedman. Again, completely misunderstanding the nature of the Chinese Communist Party in the same way that he completely misunderstood the nature of Putin, in the same way he completely misunderstands the nature of Iran. It's just, it's incredible. These morons who got us to this impasse are now back at the table saying, well, what if we just beg China? What if we, what if we go to the Russians over? What if we beg the Iranians and the Venezuelans? You morons, you're the ones who brought this about. It is your pusillanimous rejection of peace through strength that brought this about in the first place. It's incredible. And the, unless you have, a, if you have no grand strategy here, what you end up with is a bunch of tactics. Some of the tactics will, will, succeed, some of the tactics will fail. The difference between tactics and strategy, tactics are how you move troops around on a battlefield. Strategy is how you move troops around inside of an entire war. Okay, the strategy is, is a higher level than tactics. When, when you don't have a strategy, you just end up making tactical moves without any real plan. And that is what the left has been reduced to here. Because again, their, their giant strategy failed, but they refuse to see that their strategy failed. The strategy of appeasement, the strategy of what if we just integrate in global markets? What if we just, what if we make nice with these people? What if we just go negotiate with them? What if diplomacy is our strategy? Diplomacy is not a strategy. Diplomacy is a tactic. And when you mistake diplomacy for a strategy rather than a tactic, you end up in wars. And the Biden administration still refuses to recognize that. So two things can be true at once. As always, they can be prosecuting the war in Ukraine halfway correctly. And at the same time, they can be making overtures to nations which are more likely to make future wars like this one significantly more likely impossible. The incompetence really knows few boundaries. I know what you're thinking. It's time to binge some more Ben Shapiro videos. Well, you are right. You should. But first, like and subscribe. Perfect. I'll see you in the next video.